Stay at home for so long. So newsome if you feel like I feel, baby. Come on, oh, lift them stay-at-home orders, oh, baby. Makes no sense. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to Wednesday. Hit you with the original song. Okay, just made that off the top of the dome, just for you. Um, Wednesday, listen, I, I don't know if we talked about it a little bit on Monday, Monday coming in hot, but in California, they lifted the stay at home orders. What does that mean? We don't have to stay at home. Apparently, apparently the shackles have cometh off it. Okay. According, according to the good book, AKA Yahoo news, that's where you got all your legit journalism. It just came at such a weird time. That's what doesn't make sense about anything going on in our world right now. All I keep seeing is death toll rising. COVID cases. COVID, COVID, COVID. He who must not be named. COVID. Actually, quite the contrary. Okay, all people do is name COVID. Uh, out of nowhere, California just lifts its stay-at-home orders. And I mean, it, I, I'd seen that there was lawsuits and everything against uh, from small businesses. It just none of it makes sense. And the reason why it doesn't make sense is <clears throat> nothing changed with statistics coming out and everything that we're supposed to be relying on. But all of a sudden, Gavin Newsom, his little beady eyes is like, I can't take it anymore. I got to go eat outdoors again, but pretend it's indoors. So he just left to stay at home orders. And don't get me wrong, I, I, I'm all for it. I, I love giving the power back to the people in such a small way, which is weird because like the government isn't even supposed to be able to take your life and liberty away from you like that. Um, but it just came at such a weird time, which I really feel a big reason for it is, uh, and listen, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I'm willing to get in it. I'm allowed to have free thoughts, you know, think outside the box every now and then. 100% was political. The whole reason for shutting everything down. I, I saw within a week of Biden becoming president, uh, Chicago reinstates indoor dining. Uh, other states start doing outdoor dining. California does outdoor dining. At a time where statistically it doesn't make any sense. Other than to try to manipulate the people into being like, oh, a Democratic president did this. And just trying to get wins for the Democratic Party. Um, it's just real odd, you know, it's just such a weird time and, uh, but shit, anything that, that gives especially small businesses back their freedom and the opportunity to earn an income, I'm all for it, all for it. Um, it's just, I know I keep repeating it, but it just is such a weird time for it just to happen out of nowhere where allegedly we got all these different strains and more deadly. Oh, this new UK one. They got that shit straight from the tea kettle. 50% more deadly. And then they got a Brazilian one that's got a fat ass. And then they got a South African one that talks like this. I actually don't know South Africa. I don't know how South Africans talk. Um... But none of it makes sense that now we're going to start lifting some shit uh, unless they unless he comes out and he says, hey, we fucked up because we realized that the stay at home orders are actually making cases be worse. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't have shut down your gyms and told you to stay inside. Maybe you should have got some vitamin D. Because from what I see is all the real stay at home orders did was just make people gather in small places together, shutting the curtains, not even letting any sunlight in. There was zero vitamin D. Only thing happening behind curtains was the other vitamin D on someone's daughter. Bars. Harsh reality bars. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Just came at a weird time. Weird time. But you know what? It's Wednesday. And we just keep it moving. Listen, it's hump day. Hopefully your week's been going good. Hopefully you're sticking to a regiment. Listen, 
the biggest key. Welcome to Anthony Robbins' Evan Lopez edition. The biggest key is just schedules, routine, repeat, discipline. Okay? Bars. Repetitive bars. Why? That's how you get results, baby. It's all just time invested. Okay? It's all just time invested. Your boy, he starts feeling real good when he starts hitting Wednesday and Thursday and he's been nailing off his checklist every single day. Bam, bam, bam. People ask me how I do a lot of shit. Listen, checklist. If there's one thing that you ever take away from me, have a checklist, have routines, have things that you regularly do and check off. Make a list and put a little check mark next to it. Starts off easy. Listen, I get a couple easy out of the way. Make coffee, make my bed. Bars. I got two done real quick in the morning. Then I journal, then I read. Listen, you guys know the routine if you've been listening. But a big one is uh, something that I had to refine. Here's the pitfall of a checklist. Too much repetitive stuff that doesn't actually get you closer to your goals. Um... There's a, what I have as a list of MVPs. I need at least three most valuable priorities that I got to put on my list daily that I have to make sure I get done because those are actually getting me closer to my goals. Okay. And they're different for me than they are for you. You just got to look at your list and you got to be like, what is my ultimate goal? What am I trying to achieve in my life? And I want to be doing in 10 years. I want to be doing it in five years. What do I want to have established in a year? And then you take goals out of each of those things. And then you make sure you work at them every single day. Okay? Because it's just going to be those small compound interest movements that you do that's going to get you there. You want to get in shape? Don't go crazy. Don't get the crazy gym membership. Don't throw out all the junk food. Just small changes, baby. Small changes. I want to do 50 push-ups a dude. Do five sets of 10. Okay? For three or four days a week. All right, bam, that's 200 push-ups a week. All right, then you start etching that up the next week. Five sets of 15 bars. Now we're getting somewhere. Then we're doing five sets of 20. We're at 100. Now we're doing four sets of 25. Now we're doing six sets of 25, eight sets of 25, four days a week. Now we're putting in some numbers. And over time, you're going to be able to maintain that rather than go crazy. Okay, it's a big thing I see people do. You get injured, can't stick to it because it's too strict. You're loosey-goosey, baby. You got to fly a little bit, okay? Don't go too crazy. Just set small goals and chip away at them daily. But it feels good, ladies and gentlemen. It feels like we are starting to figure out this pandemic, starting to figure out quarantine, the stay-at-home shit. Um... In the sense of either we're accepting it or we're getting close to the tunnel ending, you know, it, it feels like with the vaccines and everything that people are trying to, uh, like we're actually making progress and I don't know, um, I guess I'm optimistic that I hope, uh, at least more optimistic than last episode. Okay. Cause I know last episode I was saying, I don't see an end in sight. But I feel like that might uh, that might have been overdramatic is what I'm saying. I feel like we're going to start getting to a place where we do have live performance again. Listen, since your boy had that nightmare, if you listened to a couple episodes ago, had a nightmare that I was, I, I, it was a repetitive dream where I kept uh, being outside of a venue with a bunch of comedians and they're like, Evan, you're going up next. And I wouldn't even realize I was on the show. And then I looked down at my notes and it was all blurry. Um, and I would keep bombing over and over and over again. Your boy started going through his notes. I was like, I can't ever make that dream a reality. Okay. It was a nightmare. So I started going over stand up notes and listen, it felt so fucking good to start going through bits again, to start whew, getting the dust off of them. Okay. Because, listen, your boy's been a caged peacock, all right? You got to let me fly. At the end of the day, you got to let me fly. The Puerto Rican pigeon, okay? Molten, losing feathers, getting tired, getting fat, eating too much seed in the penthouse, you know? Just cooped up. You got to hit that sky, baby. 
If you're meant to fly, hit that sky, all right? And you can't, you can't keep a good pigeon down at the end of the day. A lot of weird bird metaphors I'm throwing at you. I know they're not making sense because that became a peacock and a pigeon. Don't question it. Just go with it, baby. That's what I say. That's what I've always said. Um, I was thinking, how crazy has this past year been? Like, there's so much stuff that happened that if you had thought in the beginning of the year wasn't even really possible. Like, back in March, it was a scary time. Like, I know a lot of people, you know, we, we've changed our opinions about COVID and how serious it is. We thought it was going to be a fucking death sentence. We thought it was the plague. But just like everything in our society compared to past societies bitch ass and I mean that with no disrespect I know it is attacking and and people with pre-existing conditions and the elderly which is why your boy takes it serious wear my mask when I gotta wear my mask but I've been taking Flintstone vitamins since Pampers you know I'm good I'm good but we thought this was gonna be a death sentence for everyone we thought it was gonna wipe people out and listen there's a lot of people who had the wildest conspiracy theories. I was having people send me things about Chinese phone data, about all these people that, you know, they disappeared off the Chinese phone, cell phone plan in the millions. So they're like, China's hiding how many people are really dying. It's far more. I'm like, you can't listen to this shit. People thought you were just going to be driving down the street and your lungs would fill with cement and you would just be dead. Like, this is fear mongering. This is not good. But there's a lot of stuff I fell for because we really did think that, oh, we're all going to die. Cool, cool, cool. Um, got engaged because I'm like, hey, we're going to die. Might as well just do this. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's something I also think about this past year. The people who got divorced, the people who are separated, the people who realized they weren't compatible. Maybe it sped up a lot of breakups for people, which is a good thing, you know? I remember one of the first weeks of quarantine. I'm talking like March when the first day at home order happened. And uh, we were like, oh shit, this is killing people. Uh, my girl and I were sitting on our patio talking at night. And all of a sudden a car pulls up on the street. And we're, but we're listen, we're both a couple nosy neds. We like to look over and see what's going on. This car pulled up and they're screaming in the car and uh, a guy and a girl and we're there for the drama. Listen, Johnny dramas, we're here for it. And uh, this girl gets out and she's like, fuck you. I hate you. You piece of shit. And then um, (laughs) the person takes off and then it got real sad because I remember thinking, oh, this is a pandemic. And she's probably got nowhere else to go. She's sitting on the sidewalk with two bags in front of my place. I'm not letting her in, though. Could have the flu. Could have that Chinese flu. And uh, she just starts weeping like a moaning ghost that just is haunting this home. Just... Listen, that's how you know it's a real cry from the depths of your soul is when you have to catch your breath in the middle of it. You know that little that cry you did when you thought your life was over as a little kid? Just <laughs> You ever have that when you're a little kid and you like almost throw up? You're crying so hard. You're like, I, and then you're just fucking, your parents like, okay, you need to breathe. Or they just smack you in the head because you're being weird. No, didn't happen to you. But I just remember at that moment thinking like, man, we have stay at home orders and this person is just wandering the streets. It's scary when you have a home, but this person is just walking around with her couple of bags, you know? I just remember feeling so bad for her because I was like, she doesn't have anybody right now. She sure shit not going to have us, you know? But it was crazy. Um, 
And there was different phases of 2020 where it was fun for like a week. For like a week, it felt like vacation where it was like, you know how you ever have it? I'm one of those weird people that when I get sick and there's like nothing I can do where they're like, all right, you got to just stay in bed and rest and I can just watch TV. Uh, I enjoy it for like a couple of days because I'm like, oh, I'm finally getting a reset because I just like overwork with everything. So I'm like, I finally just get the chill. That's what it felt like. And we were watching, you know, Tiger King, Joe Exotic and all that. That was the fun part of the pandemic, right? Reflecting on that. Those were good days. Good days. Getting fucking uh, Postmates. You'd fucking pick it up with your fucking gloves and rub that shit down. I did that all the minute. I did that for a couple weeks where you were like cleaning groceries. Now, I just lick my groceries before. I, that's how I check them at the store. I just lick them now. It's crazy, you know. There's still people driving around with masks on. Can we talk about them? I don't know. Listen, if you're someone who drives with a mask on during the pandemic, reach out to me. I just want to know the logic behind it because I don't know. I don't know if it's something that I just don't know about. Like, you know, is it getting pulled up through the fumes in the car? But I mean, I appreciate it. I'd rather have you going that far with it than one of these people who are just like walking through the stores with no mask and are like, hey, sorry, you're not going to violate my rights. And it's like, bitch, you don't have rights in this store. It's like all the people who are like all good with no shoes, no shirt, no service. Don't understand the mask policy. Not going to impose on my rights. Sorry, bro. Not today. Not today. Man, it's been a crazy year. So much that this would be the time for aliens to come. It would take us about a day or two to adjust and just be like, okay, now we got aliens. Like it would be crazy for a little bit. And then we'd be like, all right, we're good with it. Of course there was aliens. But if they came in 2019, I think it would have been it would have been shocking. We wouldn't have been ready for that. But I think 2020 has really shown us what people are capable what people are capable and what life is capable of. You know? I I had thought and listen, I was doing a bit about this before the pandemic hit about how silly we have gotten as a species because life has gotten so easy. Like if you see how descriptive people get with their dating choices, like what they want, like life has gotten so easy that we've strayed completely away from the necessities of what we need in the significant others. Now we're like questioning them on a horoscope level to like, is this Gemini really going to be a fit for my Sagittariusness? You know, we start doing shit like that. They're like, yeah, but you know it's his hairstyle that I'm like, okay, I mean, or like, I just don't like that he breathes through his nose sometimes, you know, he like cracks his neck in a weird way, but it's like, those are so far off. Those are luxuries, but everybody is just all about the luxuries now. Like I saw an article and I'm, I'm going to butcher it cause I didn't really read too into it about what's that girl's name? O O S C. Is it OSC? AOC. <laughs> OSC. Uh, she was saying that this is the first generation that hasn't experienced uh, the American prosperity. <sighs> that's like, that's a college kid talking right there. I'm sure she, I'm sure she has her heart in the right place. I'm sure she, she thinks she's doing something right, but that's like, She's got some scary ideas and saying that this is the first generation that hasn't been able to prosper in America. Dude, we had generations go to war in Vietnam. Kids go to war. We have people uh, who died. What, what is that? Uh, the fumes that were in Vietnam. Uh, orange something. It, it was uh, Agent Orange. Yeah, linked to uh, this chemical in Vietnam that was released that so many vets died from, my grandpa included. His was linked to cancer caused from it when he was in Vietnam. 
there have been such harder times for our species than right now, even with the pandemic. Okay, listen, do you think during the Spanish flu, there was Netflix, HBO Max? Listen, HBO Max is a gift to the world. All right. You think there was Baby Yoda? You think there was Tiger King? You think there was Postmates? You think there was Chipotle back then? Some Chipotle? No, there was none of that. It has never been easier to be a human. We have so many programs and get, listen, I get it. There are people who aren't prospering. And it's something we need to fix and something that I think we're always striving for as a society to take care of our the lowest level of our society. But people want to say there's so many people who aren't food secure in America. I 100% agree. And we try to have programs to help with that. And I get it. It's very hard. And this isn't to discredit that. But there's always been people who weren't food secure, starvation, the Great Depression. When you look at it in perspective of what has come before us, and I'm only talking about this one particular situation of this is the first generation that hasn't experienced American prosperity. There's so many generations before us that had it so much worse. Throughout time, let's not even look at just America. All right. And I think... Part of everything going on when people do get, you know, listen, I, I get pandemic depression as well. I, I get, I get that chicken coop syndrome. I try to make a bird reference, but it's all about perspective on all of it and understanding. And I think even this is a big thing about validating. I hate saying the word validating because fucking millennials have ruined that word. But there's something about, and this is something that I didn't allow for myself growing up a lot because, you know, I had a lot of guilt in myself and everything, just the way I grew up and stuff like that, where, you know, I wouldn't allow myself to feel certain things. You know, I've talked about it before on the podcast. I lost my brother at a young age, you know, when I was 16 in my arms, just real devastating shit. And I blamed myself a lot for years. And because of that, I never would allow myself to validate my own feelings about it, where it was like I had to push it down and it wasn't okay that I was going through hard times, you know, and struggling with all this stuff. I just had to push it away because I lived, you know, and, you know, I had to focus on trying to help the family because I was there when it was to happen. It was my fault, you know, and I had to just try to do everything I could for the family, never validate anything I did. Because either I felt like I deserved it or this hardship and I didn't deserve a break. But as I've got older and listen, I've, I'm able to talk about all this stuff now because through the years I finally processed it and like figured out the past and everything like that. And I think with the pandemic and everything like that, it's easy to lose track and not allow yourself and not validate yourself, uh, these feelings, which I think is where the frustration and this anger comes from that a lot of people have. Like sometimes you have to stop and go, okay, this is kind of a hard time. I haven't been able to get my fulfillment and do things. So you have to like remind yourself that you are going through something that's kind of crazy. Um, and I think that when you do that, it, it puts things back in perspective of like, okay, I don't have to be trying to do this five or six days a week and do that and do this. <clears throat> but on the flip side, you can validate how you feel and everything going on. But maintaining perspective on how much worse things could be is huge. And I don't really like telling people to look on the bright side or to be like, oh, look at it this way. And this is so much easier. But there is benefit to not always thinking that you're in the worst case scenario, 100%. And I welcome opportunities to, to struggle. It's one thing that, you know, I think is good for people. Uh, I talked about recently, uh, I don't call them breakdowns, I call them breakthroughs. 
I really do think that a lot of times when people are going through hard shit and they hit a breaking point, it's like you have two ways you can go with it. You can either keep going down this rocky fucking hill or find footing and start climbing to a place you've never been before. Sometimes you need, like, sometimes you need to feel those bad feelings to help you get out of whatever you're dealing with. Um, which is why I, I hate when people, this is why I hate victimizing. And I hate when people just start doing the woe is me shit. Because then they don't accept that it's their actions that got them in that situation. Because no matter what, whatever you're doing, whatever the situation is, how it's affecting you is 100% your responsibility. This just turned into a self-help podcast. Hi, Tony Robbins again. How you doing? But it's like, it's the biggest thing for me because it's kind of a pet peeve of mine now. And it's not really a pet peeve, but it's something that I know the process. Because <clears throat> in the past, there was times where <clears throat> you do hit a point where if you've been through something, <clears throat> you want to blame others. You want to blame your situation on exterior things that have happened. And when you do that, you validate bad feelings. You allow yourself to partake in, you know, things that aren't good for you because you have an excuse. And the thing is, is those never work out. And it's not until you're like, no one's going to help me with this problem. It's no one else's fault but my own. So now I need to figure a way out. Like once you start realizing that you are the one that put yourself in that situation, even if it's not necessarily true, like a big thing was accepting responsibility for anything that's happened because then it just gives you the freedom to get out of it. Once you stop being like, I can't do this because of that person, it might feel shitty to accept that blame and be like, no, nah, this isn't my fault, blah, blah, blah. I was dealt a bad hand. It doesn't matter. Once you accept it, you start building a roadmap of how to get out of that shit. I don't care if it's debt. I don't care if it's a bad breakup. I don't care if it's a bad job, you know, a bad life decision, you know, uh, a death or something, you know. Whenever a death isn't a good one, that's not a good example because sometimes people go through shit and, you know, a friend passes away or something like that or family member. You just can't go, well, that's my fault. It's counterintuitive. But I just mean that feeling of, you know, there's a there's a grief process uh, to that that you kind of have to go through naturally. But there has to be a point where you don't dwell on it. You have to figure a roadmap out of it. Um, I'm huge on that. <sighs> Why did we get such down that rabbit hole? Where the fuck did that come from, ladies and gentlemen? I think I think the reason why I'm talking about that is because I think throughout 2020, I've I've dealt with that where <clears throat> having seeing a lot of people close to me going through things, and it's such uh, you see it very clear that when people are going through hard things or decisions that the way out of it or or what's holding them back is only their mindset on it and uh especially like i i think i think in general 2020 was a great thing to show us that you can change anything about your life and that how important like that's one thing is realizing do you hate your job like do you hate what you're doing on a daily basis do you not enjoy it is it not fulfillment we're seeing that the government doesn't really give two shits about everyday people so it's really it comes down to self accountability and your own responsible to help yourself responsibility to the best of your ability I think that's a huge thing and I think it's a freeing thing. Like I got very lucky during 2020 in the sense of like my video production business went away almost completely, you know, but my merch side of my business skyrocketed in the sense of just, and I don't mean like I'm up there with Nike or some shit like that. I just mean for me, it did good and I was able to, to, put myself in a position to do things and 
I realized that there's so much value in being self-independent. Self-independent? Is that a double negative? I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just trying to tell you that it's so freeing to be accountable for yourself and to not try to don't put your eggs in someone else's basket. Bars. Another bird pun. Bars. All right. Um, but I think there's power in that. And I think that in 2021, I hate talking in these parables of, you know, 2020, 2021 is going to be my year. Listen, 2020, I accomplished maybe two out of my six big year goals. We just keep it moving, pimp, and we move, we move those things over 2021. But I think in general, it's a big wake up, a big reset. And I'm going to bring this all the way back around to the beginning of what I was talking about, that I had a bit about life has gotten way too easy, that we need something to kind of change us and our perspective on what matters. And I don't necessarily think I thought that this would do it. I don't know if it did it, at least in the big scheme of things of what you see people doing on social media and what people's problems, you know, what they care about. Um, If anything, a lot of people... I think what it is, is a lot of people are putting their heels in the mud. They don't want to budge on actually making the changes in their life. It's fucking scary to pull the plug, to be like, nah, I am going to take these huge chances and try to figure out my own life. It's fucking hard. It's scary. And I don't think a lot of people have done it. And I think that's why if you're sitting in the same place, you're stagnant, you're going to be so fucking affected by every single input coming in from the outside world, from politics, from Republicans, from Democrats, from QAnon, from Antifa, from all these different things and conspiracies, you're just going to flip and flop with emotions. Um, and you just have so much more friction when you're not doing shit that you love, when you don't have an anchor and shit, which is why I think everybody, you got to You got to find a way to be your own boss. You got to find a way to be independent. I get that there's some jobs and some callings that you are inclined to go after that just don't work like that. And that's great for you. Listen, we need firefighters. We need doctors and nurses and, you know, people who go into those fields. I think teachers, but I think even the landscape of teaching is changing. Dude, there's, I learn more on podcasts than anything I ever learned in school. 100% life experience, that kind of teaching and education, which is saying something of how much we need the system revamped and changed completely. You know, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, God, ladies and gentlemen, we got way too serious on this episode. I'm sorry. All right. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. At the end of the day. (sighs) You know, I used to love saying when I worked at a Applebee's. Listen, my manager, we had a love and hate relationship. I love him now. Uh, but I would do, I, I was such uh, a rascal when I'd be at work at Applebee's. Listen, um, one time, I don't know if I told this story. I think I did that. I put, I wanted to go to a party uh, up North at my sister's uh, where she was going to college and uh, to get out of work. I told them I had pink eye. And my boss told me that I had to go in and verify it, that he needed to see that I had pink eye. And then uh, I was fucked because he was like, you have to come in right now and show me. And I remember being like, how come you don't trust me, blah, 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 this whole shit? Because I was lying. I was in college. Listen, not my coolest moment. But I put Tabasco in my eye to make it seem like I have pink eye. It burned so bad and I'm surprised I didn't lose my vision. But I went in there and... My eye was like dripping water. It did not look healthy. It didn't even look like pink eye. It looks like something so much worse. And uh, he was like, okay, you have pink eye. And then I remember being like, I demand an apology for the way he spoke to me. And then he he apologized. And then I guess as soon as I left, he was going off on me. How could that piece of shit talk to me like that? Blah, blah, blah. I was halfway up to Monterey. I didn't give a shit. Um, but I used to love to say... Uh, cause we got, we got into it a couple times and listen, I'd be like, listen, I'm sorry that the way it made you feel, but I'm not sorry that I said it bars bars, ladies and gentlemen, 
I'm sorry, I got a call. People are calling me right now from Texas. Hopefully it's something about a home. Hopefully. Um, but I want to end on this note because it's something that has been irking me for a while, ladies and gentlemen. Irking me for a while. Late night hosts are terrible right now. Listen, there is one TV host, late night host that I love. Conan O'Brien. He's the best by far to me. There is no one close. Jimmy Fallon laughs way too much. Jimmy Kimmel cries over lions and shit being hunted. He is such a pandering virtue signaling person. I want to say fuck, but it just didn't feel right. Um, it just, this whole, even Stephen Colbert. Like, I love Stephen Colbert. I think he's a witty person. But everybody in, in media has gotten so fucking... Uh, what's the other guy? He's a younger guy. <coughs> There's a couple dudes. Um, one of them's not even American. And he just loves talking shit about America. Listen, buddy. No. Okay? Um, but it's like all these... The whole model for late night, all they do is attack Trump. And they've been so fucking focused on that for so long. There is no good writing in late night right now. It is so hacky and it's so terrible because they're not really that funny. And without the set, without the audience, without all of that, the live vibes in these interviews with celebrities that are like there and they cut these up, it's terrible. And it like exposes it. But I'm like, now you guys are going to have to actually start writing jokes. Like, you don't have Trump anymore. Like, what are you going to do? Like, banning Trump on social media platforms is going to be the worst thing for media. For all these news channels, like, they want to pretend. But all these news stations, they were doing terrible before Trump came into office. And this is not me defending the guy. Listen, not defending him at all. But it's so hypocritical because he did insane stuff for their numbers. So it's going to be interesting over these next few years to see what happens. And here's my prediction, ladies and gentlemen. Here's my final prediction. These late night hosts are going away. And you know what? Good riddance. Good riddance. And you know who I hope just takes over and does good? Conan O'Brien. He can stay. And he needs to dominate late night. Okay? He's numero uno. Um, and on that note, ladies and gentlemen... I love you guys. I hope you guys are doing good. I hope this episode wasn't too serious and weird for you guys. But I just wanted to give you a little bit of a recap on 2020. I wasn't planning all that shit we were talking about. But it is what it is. Listen. Yesterday was the anniversary of Kobe Bryant passing. Maybe your boy's feeling a little emotional. Listen, I didn't, I didn't watch much basketball. But I would watch Kobe Bryant play over the years. And I respect so much. I've watched so many highlights of him talking and his mindset. I even thought about buying the Kobe Bryant book. I don't even play basketball, but I just love the way that his mind works. Not just as an athlete. You can be a great athlete and a terrible human. From what I see about Michael Jordan, that was the case of him. But Kobe Bryant reminds me of someone who can became a well-rounded human. Someone who really practice what they preach, and wanted to be the best that they possibly could in all aspects of life. Did he make mistakes? Yeah, he made mistakes off of the court. But when you see such a high-level achiever, also an empathic person, had a stroke, sorry. It's a beautiful thing, and it's inspirational. So ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, Kobe.